Hey there, D&D constituents, I am Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis, and uh, with the release of Tasha's, uh, everybody's been asking us, what is the, what's the state of D&D? And uh, Jim and I are here to uh, fundamentally declare that the state of D&D is on the other side of this drumbeat. Welcome to WebDM. Here we are six years in with the new hotness out and like how do you think uh like fifth edition is looking and what do you what do you extrapolate it being after tasha's is getting you uh, after tasha's gets used at more tables and like the state of the hobby in general like moving forward mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't know that there's anything to do about power creep i think that the economic incentives of running an rpg company and who's going to buy books who's the larger market for buying books it's not dms it's players like giving them something giving them an incentive to buy these books uh and the fact that there's player and dm material in them is nice but i also kind of like them split up sometimes um means that power creep seems to be inevitable especially as the edition grows and and the designers learn more about their system they're willing to experiment try new things that it kind of becomes hard not to introduce power creep without just recycling the old material constantly and if anything mm -hmm. the lackluster options are i see as indicative of them trying to rein in power creep but then the options become bland and flat sort of boring so it's this paradox that we've seen over and over and over again in the rpg hobby and if when you play long enough and you and you've you know it, it, a part of the hobby long enough you will notice and see that like this has happened before this happened with white wolf this happened with tsr second edition dnd this happened in third edition not familiar enough with fourth edition to say but if i was betting on it i'd probably say it happened in fourth edition this idea that you have to keep churning out material that people will buy so that you have a constant revenue stream means that power creep seems like it's inevitable could be off on that could be wrong but I don't know how to square that circle of a company needing to make money to be a viable business and, and, and yet ignoring their largest customer base, but then getting their larger customer base to buy something that they don't want, right? And, and over and over and over again in the various online communities of D&D, &D, you see this call for, we want more crunch, we want more options, we want more, more, more. I don't know how you deal with that, except to give the options that were original, that, that were in the original PHP and came out six years, six years ago, a boost. And in that sense, I wanted to see more from the class feature variants. I wanted to see something that's like, here are alternate class features for these specific subclasses. We're gonna look at each one of them individually mm -hmm. and create things for them to be like, this replaces these specific features from these domains or this archetype or whatever, so that the players who want to play those classes but not feel like they are deliberately choosing something that's going to be a it's not going to be the kind of character they want to play at that table maybe they feel pressure to like make a character that's going to contribute the most or maybe they're they like to make the most optimized powerful character for what they want to do there's nothing wrong with that but if you're closing off options because they aren't getting an update, then it it does sort of feel like, well, I mean, like I'd like to play one of these others, but I, you know, I'd also don't want to be a drag on the party who are all playing these new things that are going to be not better than me, but more opportunities to influence the game and more opportunities to do sort of like embody their character archetype in a way that's interesting. If you don't care about that, then more power to you, you know? I play players handbook classes most of the time. I love champions, you know, <laughs> and and so I, I but I want an update, not a 5.5. I don't think it needs a whole new revision, but this was a missed opportunity to say we recognize that we're six years in and we need a, it needs a fresh coat of paint. It needs an update. The underlying structure of fifth edition is great, right? It, it is. It sings. It's it seems to be a blend. <clears throat> It seems to be a blend of some of the best parts of prior edition D&D &D and created something that's robust, that you can make all kinds of other games out of, that, that the fact that you can take this, this structure and make di whole different genres of game, or that you can emulate something that people for years within the hobby have been like, you can never do a Lord of the Rings game in role-playing, and yet Adventures in Middle-Earth is amazing. 
it uses the fifth edition yeah. engine, right? That we're not seeing more of that, more willingness to push the boundaries, more willingness to um, take a look at the base rules and what came out in 2014 and go, well, we could have used more of this. You know, we, we offered suggestions here, but let's offer concrete examples and procedures for dungeon masters to follow. And I feel like something like rulings, not rules is, is hindering this edition at this point. I love the fact that we went from the constraints on DMs from third and fourth edition of like, this is what you have to do and the effect that had on the player base. But I feel like we've gone too far in the opposite direction. And we've left DMs out to dry, <laughs> you know, in terms of like, they're these awesome characters that have all these cool things and they're going to trounce your monsters. They're going to run roughshod over your, uh, you know, over your campaign and the adventures that you've made. It, and it, it might be wacky and silly and incongruous with the kind of game you want to run. Something extra for the DMs, something for them to structure their games around, to give them support. It's not, it doesn't take away their judgment. It doesn't take away their ability to homebrew or, or to adapt their campaign to the needs of the players and their group. But there needs to be more than just, I don't know, make it up yourself. You know, the way vision and cover and obscurement and hiding and stealth work is one of those things where it's like, I, I could we get a better, more clarified example of this? The wilderness exploration mm -hmm. rules haven't been put together in one place till that kit that just came out, the wilderness exploration kit, which I also picked up. It was really cool. Um, that until then they're all over the place split between the PHB and the DMG. The fact that the monster manual, it seems like they gave up after the D section <laughs> and, and just like, oh, you know, <laughs> angels, beholders, dragons, demons, devils. Great. Those are some cool monsters man, we got through that D and now we're done. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Give us a rule book that has like concrete things. We can always max out hit points. We can always max out damage. Those are low hanging fruit. Give us something else. Give us DM something more. And the number of times at web DM that we hear people go like, yeah, I really feel like as a DM, the players just walk all over what I prepare and they're kind of bored with it at some eventually the dms are bored running those fights and and they don't know what to do they don't know how to solve this issue like telling them make up whatever you want ruling not ru rulings not rules is like cold comfort to the dms who are like well I, can i get an example of what that looks like can you give me a procedure or a tool or whatever to follow and so in that sense like i really think that that if fifth edition needs something, it is a book that's more geared towards DMs. That's more geared towards like helping them and supporting them. And the flip side of this or, or, or complimentary to this is like creating adventures that are easier to run, <laughs> that don't require you to read the whole book and, and process what, you know, the, the, the way that they've laid it out and, and presented the information into an actual adventure. Um, I really think that that's necessary at this point. And eventually you might get DMs just giving up the ghost and just be like, it's too difficult. It's too much. Like I have to do too much work. The prep is, 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 uh, you know, a burden all to like have the players walk all over the, <laughs> their game. And it's not that they should be, mm -hmm. that the players should be punished and, and kept down and that they shouldn't have, uh, you know, an ability to influence the game. It's just my perception of it now, which is informed a lot by how people, interact with WebDM is that at this point, the balance is too much in favor of the players. And especially as more and more options come out, that's only going to get uh, further and balance things. So a rules update, more support for DMs. And when I say more support, I'm talking about like, go read Theros, Ravnica and Saltmarsh in the DM sections there. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of yeah. support that I'm, that I'm looking for as well as an update to the monsters. Um, you know, the other thing I'm thinking of for 5th edition, and I know I've talked a lot, but this mm -hmm. is obviously a soapbox I've built, um, is that I mm -hmm. don't know that there's any wow factor in it. When I think of like, what's the one book I would take from here to another edition? I come up scratching my head. 3rd edition, man, there's so many books from 3rd edition that I still use every time I sit down to prep. There's books in fourth edition that I never used in the game there, but that I've picked up since that I love just reading, being inspired by, 
and taking those things and translating them to fifth edition. And then the further back you go in Dungeons and Dragons, the more I like bringing in. And when I think about fifth, I'm like, Santa Thars, so there's fun stuff in there. Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. Like, I really like the monster customization. I really like the monster customization yeah. stuff in there. But, like, what adventure is there that's like, this defines the edition? I don't think it's Curse of Strahd. Sorry. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the one I always go to because <laughs> that's the most fun I had in one of the adventures that sure. come out. Sure. But I think that was more of uh, on the DM and, the, and us playing uh, and making the fun out of it. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and I mean, that's always going to be the case. We had a great time running this adventure because your group did, but like classics. And at some point I start looking at the classic adventures of D&D and it's like, why are most of them? Why were most of them written in the first like five years of the 80s? <laughs> what is it about these modules that were created in the first decade or so of D&D? that stand out as classics that people still refer to that people still recommend that still get reprinted and in some cases like updated to the current edition constantly and then i look at like others and i'm like i, I don't know third edition has red hand of doom right red hand of doom is a great campaign some of the earlier pathfinder adventure paths when paizo was doing dungeon magazine great they're really awesome and fit with a modern style of D D. and i just don't see that i could be just, you know, it might be that the edition has passed me by and I just need to get on a porch, grow my beard out and, and become a grumpy old man, which I'm already halfway there. But I, I'm, I'm, I want that. Wow. I want that. Like, holy crap. I'm going to use this all the time. Like, I want this book next to my bedside table. I want to use I want it to wear it out. Right. And I just can't think of anything that's like that for fifth edition in that wizards of the coast has put out. There's a lot of great third party supplements that, uh, I don't want to go over right now, but, uh, that I think beat that, um, including mm -hmm. adventures, middle earth. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I think that's where we're at. I like the edition. Want to see it continue. Don't want to see a sixth edition. Don't want to see a 5.5. I think those would not be good. I think they'd be bad for the hobby and are not needed, but an update, a, a fresh coat of paint, and and to look yeah. at the existing holes and and really seek to address those yeah well yeah i mean because when you when you're when you're building something the most important thing is the foundation and so when you look back at those first books and you see the holes that need to be renovated and patched and 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 gaffed over and all of that uh like i said there's a lot of that that still needs to be done i think one of my one of my biggest critiques of of D, &D um is just the um, the reference material. Like when you're reading something in the book, and uh, long-time viewers of the show know that I'm about to talk about Cypher, but like when you're reading the books and you're looking at various things that are mentioned other parts of the book or in other books, just have a page reference off to the side. Like yeah. that is not that hard to do. And it, it, it makes it makes navigating these books that much easier. Oh, I'm reading about this thing that uses this mechanic found on page 162. Flip over to 162. Okay, cool. Um, or found in, in the DMG on page whatever. Like when you're talking about the, the vision uh, re requirements and, and anything surrounding stealth and vision, all that. Why isn't, why isn't that in the PHB referencing the DMG and vice versa? So that if you're not going to put them all in one place, at least you're specifically telling a person well you can check the dmg for these rules and they complement this like yeah. it's just very simple basic things you don't have to rewrite the book you just have to make better reference pages like give me the reference numbers right. uh so that i can more easily navigate uh, yeah. what you already yeah. have yeah. like like simple things like that i think would would i don't know they'd just be a massive boon to yeah, dms I everywhere we're not talking major revisions. We're not talking like major reconstructions of it. We're talking about like clarifications on some things that are confusing. For me, it's like, all right, what do the passive skill roles really mean? Because the section in the player's handbook, it's pretty explicit. This represents the average score you would take if you continue to do the same action over and over and over again. And yet in most adventures and other material, it's presented, passive perception is presented as a radar, essentially. And like 
can we get some clarification on that? Why is it that the adventures and other material, and it, it moves way beyond passive skills, why don't they seem to reference each other? Why don't they seem to be integrated into a cohesive whole? Why is it that when I look through Icewind Dale, it doesn't seem like it matches up with the exploration rules from the DMG and the player's handbook? Why is that? And my suspicion is that they don't want any one book to be essential or they don't want to feel like, okay, you can only spend the money on this one thing. And I think that's also why we get a lot of reprints. But then it creates an, a system or, or an addition where it feels like everything is siloed and, and not fully integrated into itself. And, and then also the fact that it's, it's vague and well, it's rulings, not rules, fix it yourself. It's like, well, can we figure out whether or not you need thieves tools to pick a lock? <laughs> right? Okay. What proficiency do I actually use with that? It's a minor thing, but it's also one of those where, why is it this vague? Anyway, I could keep going. It's just going to get more and more nitpicky um, and, and ranty. But um, those are my sort of overall thoughts and yeah. what I wished Tasha's would address. You know? Yeah. What else? No, I'm, 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 I'm right there with you. Hey, guys. If you liked our talk today, head on over anywhere you can find podcasts. And type WebDM Talks. Listen to us talk about Tasha's culture and of everything for a whole hour. Check us out. Subscribe. See you later.